Next up, we pick up on action from the Astron Energy Polo Cup. Coming to the famous East London Grand Prix circuit, the Dunlop tyres are going to be pushed hard. There is no doubt about it. And the battle will continue between the top two in this championship, Jason Newsmall and Nathan Victor. But there are a couple of guys who have gone really well here in the past. And certainly one of them will be looking to turn his luck around at this circuit will be Ethan Goodseer. He had a big moment in his racing career at Potter's Pass. And he's found some serious pace here this weekend. So watch out for the resurgence there of him. Roshan Goodman has had a fantastic final part of the season and he's found some good pace here in qualifying as has the ninja Nirav Singh in the Carl Army exhaust car. Great to see a couple of new hunters at the front end and at the back end the masters probably going to be as exciting. And after qualifying it's actually Carl Fisser who was a big surprise at the front end in the Volkswagen Motorsport Polo beating out Charles Smallberg and Nathan Victor and Jason Newsmore, the championship contenders on the second row and Ethan could see it just outgunning Tyler Robinson. Wayne Masters was quickest of the Masters in the top 10 and he beat out his arch rivals Derek Smallberger and John Kruger. Top 6 now in the Super Bowl shootout, Tyler Robinson will lead them out, Ethan Katia will be right there with her trying to get a little bit higher up. The two arch rivals in the championship including that man in Summit Racing's machine, Nathan Victor looking to get to the front end. Charles Smallberger has got a good lap, he's got a really nice lap out there and Carl Fisser wants to return the favour and stay at the front end, can he do it again as the flag comes out? Super Bowl has just turned things up ever so slightly and Victor is the man at the front end. He's got the Super Bowl. I mean, just a roller coaster of emotions, honestly. Um, yeah, the past two races, we saw, saw myself struggle. Um, yeah, I drove someone else's car, figured out there was something up with my car. It was such a big rush, got everything ready, just got it ready for the race. And it's probably my first time driving the car like this. So we struggled the whole day, but I knew in pre-3 when I finally had part his flat, I knew we had it. So yeah, just confident and over the moon. There's just so much that goes into this, like behind the scenes, my dad, my mom, Marco, Rodney, everyone. It's just, yeah, it's just, it's just, this is for them. And getting the Dunlop pole position award is Wayne Masters. If it's a good start, then we'll do well. If it's a bad start, we'll have a massive fight and a nice start, so I suppose we'll make it exciting for everybody. But um, yeah, loving it. Um, track uh, is a bit daunting. It's a pretty simple layout, but um, very skittish around this track when you're trying to go 200 through Potters, so uh, that's, that's our challenge. All of us have that challenge. Coming up after the break, can Nathan summit the top of the podium? Welcome back to action from Astron Energy Polo Cup, and race one is about to start. The rivals are fired up and look out for some big battles in the Masters category. As I said, there's going to be a certainly two different battles we'll be trying to concentrate on and give you all the action that we can, as we always do here. And this is going to be something pretty spectacular because there's a couple of guys who have shown they've got some serious prowess for the circuit. A very famous Grand Prix circuit uh, that's been running now for about 65 years on and off. Great to see the history behind this circuit now being shown. The respect that's due with the first start. And look at Jason Newsmore off the line. Looking to try and get to the front end, can he? No, he can't. Oh, what a start there from Victor. Victor goes side by side as they head down there, but then he has to just tuck in behind. So Jason Newsmore looks like he is on a run here big time. He got up to second place after that Super Bowl, and Nathan Victor outgunned him only by a couple of thousands of a second. And he's trying to outgun him now. Look in the background as well, the Masters have got going. But it's Ethan Goodseer who's up to third place and tucked in behind him. By the looks of it, it's Carl Fisser. And it's the Sabretech car. Somebody running wide. Is that Nirov Singh? Yes, it is. Nirov Singh running wide on the right from the word go. That is certainly not what you want to be doing. Those Dunlops are not going to love you putting them onto the dirty stuff so early on. We're on board here with Ethan Gutsia. Heading down to Cocabana and on the brakes. Oh, a little touch there between the top two. Jason Newsom trying to find a way through there on the summit car of Nathan Victor. But Victor keeping him honest for now. We're on board with Lee Thompson Racing and the JRT experience, Ethan Gutsia. As I said, this is a man who certainly wants to turn his luck around. He had a big moment when he was still part of Team Red Racing coming out of Potters. And he's now in third place on the Team Red Racing man's tail, looking for a way through. Tucked in behind him, Carl Fisser, the man who was on pole position after qualifying and just lost it in the Super Bowl. Tyler Robinson continues her top six hunt and stays in that top six. As expected, right on her tail though is Dr. Hannes Gippers looking for a way past. This is Wayne Masters going through on the inside of Nirov Singh. Nirov ran wide as we saw coming out of Potters, which is why he's dropped into the Masters battle. And he's now tucked in just between the top two in the Masters. So you can see Derek Smallberg is going to have to try and find a way through there in the Sabretech car. 
and get ahead of that Kyle Lamy exhaust machine just ahead of him. The Habot and Team Red Racing car there is John Kruger. Then it's Luigi Ferro. That Alpha ESS team have had a fantastic run so far. And Ferro is getting better and better every time he climbs behind the wheel. That is for sure. You can see him fighting here just in the background with the rest of the pack. This is the lead pack of the Masters. It's led out by the uh, top car from Alpha ESS. Trying to close down there on Pier Luigi Mussolini, who's also had a little bit of a baptism of fire here at this very daunting circuit. We're on board with Masters as he crosses the line to complete lap number one. So Wayne, let's see if he keeps it all together. That's fifth. Is he going to go to six? Are we going to watch him go all the way through here? Hopefully we are. Then we can hang tight and tell him whether he did come off. No, he didn't. He held it flat through Potters, and that's an important factor in these cars, is to keep it flat through there. John Kruger trying to close the gap down for third place on the Sabertech car of Derek Smallberger. You can see Pierluigi Mussolini just up the road there. And at the back of this pack, look out for Ilio Mussolini as well. Also a welcome return to the Masters category and a serious contender, I'm sure, in the next couple of race meetings. They come down on the brakes, and it is... John Kruger trying to close that gap on the Sabertech car of Derek Smallberger. He goes pushed to pass. Does John use one? No, he decides not to. Back into the mid-pack of the cup category. And it's Roshan Goodman under a bit of pressure there from Mo Karodia. And Karodia now fighting hard as well with the, the blue liveried machine there of Jean-Dre Marais. Summit racing out front. Jason Newsmore's made a mistake somewhere. He's made a mistake somewhere. He's dropped down into third place. And it looks like Nathan Victor's made a similar mistake coming out of Beacon. Going to give Carl Fisser a run to take over the lead. Is he going to be able to do that? Carl Fisser looking to try and lead this race as they cross the line. Is he going to be there? No. Yes, only just by literally a bumper. Carl Fisser stays ahead. And oh, good move there from Jason Newsmore. Tucks in behind Fisser, realizing that inside line is probably going to be the better line to be on. Nearly a tag there between himself and Nathan Victor on the exit of Potters. And here comes Ethan. Ethan could see going to try and pounce as well. Victor sees him coming, shuts the door into Rifle. Very close racing amongst the, the Polos as we expected. And waiting to pick up the pieces there in the OMP Sabertech car is Charles Smallberger. So we got a new leader into Cocabana. It's Carl Fisser who leads out now, the 17-year-old, at the front end of the battle between the two championship rivals. Good drive. And Fisser makes a mistake. Oh, Fisser makes a big mistake. I think he lost it missed a gear there. Something went wrong in Fisser's car and it's allowed Loose Moore to dive through. And Ethan Katsia goes with him. So Ethan Katsia capitalizing there on a slight mistake there from Carl Fisser. And he's now going to try and get up the inside of Jason Loose Moore into the S's. Loose Moore slides it into the S's. The back end stepped out there. Oh, the ninja's off as well. Nirov Singh at the back of the pack in that Carl Lama exhaust car off at Cocabana. Mo Karodia trying to find a way through non skippers. Skippers has lost a little bit of ground there to the battle between himself and what he was in there originally with Roshan Goodman and Tyler Robinson. And up the inside goes Kutsia into Beacon. We got chopping and changing at every single corner here at East London Grand Prix Circuit. The kind of action we always expect to see at this track, particularly amongst the polos. This Astron Energy Polo Cup this season has been spectacular at every track we've been to. Now they come across the line with the master side of things and it's uh, Chris Dale closing in on Ferro. It looks like Mike Mabaglia might have got through there on Luigi Ferro. So a bit of change up there for what is now 4th, 5th and 6th place in the Masters. You can see them coming across the line there. And yes, there is a change up. So uh, as they come down onto the breaking point or just the roll off point, if you do roll off, or do you keep it flat like you see there from the Habot and Team Red car of John Kruger? He's lost a lot of ground to the leader. And looks like we possibly may have lost uh, sight of Derek Smallberger as well. Coming down on the brakes, it's Masters leading out the Masters category as we've seen on a numerous occasions this season. And we're on the final lap as well and Jason Newsmore continues to lead things out but it's Ethan Goodsear who's going to put the pressure on Tim up at Beacon Corner for the last time. We're on board here with Lee Thompson Racing and the JRT Racing Experience car of Ethan Goodsear trying to find a way through here on Jason Newsmore. The Renegade Racing Man seems to have held the line there. Look at how he's fighting the wheel here, coming out of Beacon. And that might have lost him a little bit of ground, and it's going to be a drag to the line. Loosemore's going to cross the line with the win. Ethan Goodsear is going to come through for second place, and right on their tail is Carl Fisser. Good drive there from the youngster. Behind that is Nathan Victor for fourth place, beating out Charles Smallberger for fifth. But in the official results, a penalty given to Jason Loosemore, dropping him down one place behind Ethan Goodsear, giving him the victory. Carl Fisser maintains third ahead of Nathan Victor. And in the Masters category, once again, Masters from Smallberger and John Kruger in third, beating out Mike Bobaglia and Chris Dale. Ethan had me and uh, throughout the race was four leaders. Um, but yeah, I just kept the pressure on. Um, it was a hot race, so I knew brakes and tyres were going to be a, a factor at the end of the race. Um, so I managed it from there. Almost lost it in the last corner. In the Masters, once again, Masters at the top. 
Lost for Paul, obviously, to Derek. And then I had to wait a lap and find a gap, and he got held up by a back marker. And then I uh, took an opportunity and snuck up the inside of him. And then it was just trying to just keep the car on the track. Um, and also trying to get the boss's lap for the next position for the next race. But we don't know if we, what, what, what happened there, so we'll wait to hear from the results. But a brilliant race. Looking forward to an even more brilliant race in race two now. We've just set the scene in race one. And it's uh, every man and lady for themselves out there to uh, try and win the final race here at the East London Grand Prix circuit for Astron Energy Polo Cup. We're on board with Charles Smallberger in the Sabretech car. He'd be looking to try and use that front row advantage. Ethan Gutsia is alongside him, as you can see there. Those uh, positions are determined from the fastest lap set in race number one. So Ethan Gutsia was quickest. Charles Smallberger was second quickest. And Pierluigi Mussolini is looking quick as he puts the wheel on the dirt coming across the pit lane there. Nice start there from him. Much better start there from him as well. Remember, he's the first time out for him. Not such a good start coming out of Tyler Robinson. She's right at the back of the pack, having not got a really good lap in in that first heat. And she's just ahead of Hannah Skippers, who is being uh, hunted down there big time by Nirov Singh as they come under braking for Kokobana for the first time Ethan Gutsia leads out and look at how close it is there Jason Newsmore has already made his way up into second place by the looks of it and going to try and redeem himself after that little incident between himself and Nathan Victor that dropped him down one place in race number one a couple of guys putting wheels on the dirt don't do that guys well <laughs> for ESS down in is this Luigi leading things out here over his teammate Masters oh it's very close this is fantastic stuff to see Two ESS boys going at it, but uh, there's going to be a fight on of note here. Derek Smallberger leading things out in the Masters category. Almost on a similar vein to what we saw at the front end earlier on. Uh, not quite now where it is now. Charles dropped back slightly, but Charles certainly was in contention for Potter's pass. It is Derek leading the pack as they go in. The Masters pack, that is, in and out of the complex for the first time. Masters in second. John Kruger in third. Bob Aglia is fourth. Chris Dell up just ahead of Luigi Ferro, the second of the Alpha ESS cars. Look at that. Late gear change there and a little touch between Shaw and Jay and another touch coming on the exit of Beacon. So a little bit of rubbing's racing going on between these two boys. And it's cost Shaw slightly there and allowed Carl Fisser to come up alongside him. Fisser and Smallberger are literally mirror to mirror as they cross the line. It's exactly what we kind of expect to see. And it is fantastic to see how well everybody's gelled to the circuit now. Just a long steam train. The only man out of, out of line there slightly. And there's a big touch. Oh, out of shape. Big time there for Carl Fisser. Fisser goes on. And Nathan Victor runs wide. Victor runs wide, completely missing. Carl Fisser spinning right in front of him. I think Victor might have ended up in the wall. No, he hasn't. How did he save that? Nathan Victor on the outside of Potter's Pass. How he saved that, only he knows. The last time I saw somebody go off there, it was literally throw the car in the bin and I'll see you in the hospital. But Nathan Victor managed to hang on to it and he brings the car back on track right at the back of this very, very hotly contested pack of Astron Energy Polo Cups. Have a look at this. This is Charles Smallberger's point of view. Heading down into Potters. He's got the inside line. He's got Fissa on his outside. Fissa comes across. They tag. Fissa goes sideways. Charles Smallberg goes inside line. Wow, brilliant stuff from Charles as well to hang on to that one. How he kept that all together, only he knows too. This is the remnants now. That's, oh, where do you go? I don't know how Wayne Masters even saw where to go through that. There was so much dust and debris in the way there, but he manages to just squeeze through. And there you can see Nathan Victor coming back on track just behind the Masters pack. And Moss has got his own fight on at the moment as they head down towards Kokobana. Is that Victor trying to come back at him? Under braking for Kokobana corner. Moss has got the inside line. Victor will have to just tuck in behind him. So that's jean dre Marais. That's Tyler Robinson. The two Team Red racing machines coming through the complex. That is Roshan Goodman. So formation flying there for Team Red. Oh, and Nirov Singh's getting up close and personal there with Mo Karodia. Karodia and Singh coming together. And there goes bumpers and bits and pieces of cars. Picked up by Wayne Masters coming out of the complex. And it's just non-stop action here in this pack. And the mid-pack now starting to heat up. Nirov is not normally there. So to have the ninja up there is certainly a much better outing there for the Kyle Army exhaust man. He has got OMP and Fast 5 Motorsport right on his tail. The Lee Thompson Racing Team have had an epic day here today. And a little tag from Skippers from behind as well. Catches Karodia out. He comes back at him. Retags him. This is absolutely brilliant stuff. Wayne Moss is going to try and stay out of harm's way here. Can he? He's going to follow Pierluigi Mussolini in the FSS machine just ahead of him. It's going to give him good drive down towards Potters. Has he got enough to get through there? Yes, he has. And he tucks in right behind Mussolini. This is going to mean Mussolini will have to go through Potters flat. It's probably the first time he's done it flat. And that's why the back end stepped out ever so slightly. 
So Pierluigi Mussolini trying to close down on his fellow OMP driver at the front end of this pack. And it's Corodia who's opened up a little bit of a margin after that little bit of tag between four cars coming out of Beacon. Now they head down towards Cocabana. They're going to spread out. You can see the front end or well, the front end of Master's car has still got bits and pieces of that scrap. And there eventually it gets away. The piece of car that came from the undercarriage, I think of Mo Corodia, was uh, literally a hood ornament on the front end of Master's car all the way down the straightaway. That'll just heat the engine up ever so slightly. Got to be careful of that. This is the Team Red formation flying, as I said. Tyler ahead of Jandre. Jandre ahead of Roshan. Those three having a bit of fun and games in that mid-pack of cars as well. It's about 7, 8th and ninth place on track. Basically means all of the Team Red cars are into that top 8. Ethan Gutsia though has been the car to beat yet today. He got gifted one in the first one. He's done it all by himself in the second one. And this is the turnaround that Ethan Gutsia has been wanting. After that massive crash he had at Potters only a couple of seasons ago, he's come back with double victories here at the East London Grand Prix circuit in Astron Energy Polo Cup. Looks like it might be a double on the cards here for Masters as well. Yes, the Alpha ESS, and uh, oh, what a run here from him. He's just got Corodia behind him and Skippers. He's managed to keep out a couple of those cup contenders. Fissa returns at the back end of Corodia, down in ninth place overall, but it's Masters for the win in the Masters category yet again. Let's get those official results now as they pop up. It is a fantastic double win for Ethan Kutsia, Lusmore in second and Smallberger in third. Wayne Masters finished in seventh place overall and took the Masters victory ahead of Derek Smallberger, John Kruger, Farrow and Chris Dale. Let's catch up now with double race winner in the Astron Energy Polo Cup, Ethan Kutsia. It was quite an emotional win uh, for my dad. You know, I think he started to cry a little bit. Uh, I don't think the winners honestly hit me yet, but uh, leading from start to finish is exactly what you want on a national weekend, so I don't think it could have gone any better and it really feels good to win after breaking my back, you know, it feels like I've jumped a hurdle and now I can continue on with my racing career and nothing's holding me back. And a double win for Wayne Masters. We had a, not a great start, but I uh, fell into second behind Derek. I knew I, I was going to get him a lap later, which we did with, with a lot of uh, the youngsters coming off and all over the track and there was three of us through Rifle. Uh, managed to stick it in the inside, got past Derek and then uh, kept going and then caught the other youngsters who were knocking the hell out, hell out of each other. And I was a bit worried, I thought, should I stay out of this? But you know, being a racer, you need to get past them. So I just worked my way through a lot of them. Let's have a look at the South African National Championship as we go into the penultimate round. Jason Newsmore with a small advantage over Nathan Victor, but we're going to his home circuit. Ethan Gutsia, the big step up into third ahead of Mo Karodia. In the Masters, Wayne hangs on at the moment ahead of Derek Smallberger. Nice gap there for him, but John Kruger and Mike Bobaglia could still be in the running. All the action provided by the East London Grand Prix circuit at the Extreme Festival of National Motorsport, round five. Be sure to join us for the penultimate round of the Extreme Festival in the Mother City at Kalani International Raceway on the 21st of September. All this Extreme Festival action is proudly brought to you by Astron Energy, Volkswagen Motorsport, Dunlop Tires and Investchem Chemical Logistics.